Welcome back, folks. We have the Dow up 24. NASDAQ is down four. S&Ps are down one. And right now we have our man, Mr. Bob Archer up. Bob is the CEO of Great Panther Silver. Great Panther, folks, is a miner that's uh, focused on silver gold market. Uh, they own two uh, great mines in Mexico. They have a potential for an, another one in Peru. Uh, strong balance sheet, no debt, 17 million in cash, 33 million in working capital. Uh, bottom line, you've heard uh, Bob uh, on TFNN many times. Bob Archer, welcome back. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Good I'm doing start. great, man. Yourself? Good. Excellent. Thank you. Well, it's been a long road in the metals market, hasn't it, Bob? Oh, it has indeed. It has indeed. It reminds me of the late 90s. <laughs> I, I thought I wouldn't see that again. You know, it's pretty amazing, but guess what? You're alive and kicking, man, and the company is alive and kicking. Uh, and I guess having no debt going along that downdraft is a huge deal, isn't it? No, it really has been. Uh, it's, it's helped us to uh, weather the storm, so to speak. And, uh, you know, we're coming out of the, uh, hopefully coming out of the other end of it now. And uh, we're really in, uh, in a great position to, uh, to take advantage of, uh, of the situation. And uh, particularly, as it, you know, when it comes to acquisition opportunities, uh, you know, because we, we have a strong balance sheet, uh, we can be looking at uh, some, some stressed assets and, uh, you know, um, trying to take advantage of uh, some turnaround opportunities, uh, and that's exactly what we're doing in Peru. Yeah, you know, you, you know it's amazing. La last night, they had elections in Peru last night, folks, and the stock market was up 10% last night. <laughs> I was watching that, Bob, this morning, and I'm saying to myself, this is amazing. <laughs> that, was a, that was an amazing move. It was the biggest move all, all night long, folks. And it's not that I watched Peru stock market, but because I have all the markets up, it was like, what the heck is going on here, man? That, that's pretty cool, man. So, Bob, yeah. t tell us, you know, we haven't talked to you for a while, so tell us, you know, what exactly uh, is going on in Mexico? You know, I, I know your your production has gone up also too because you, you, you're hitting higher grade, right? Well, you you did all companies go for higher grade because the, the you know the price is getting destroyed? Uh, well, that's that's a big part of it. Yeah, I mean, you have to focus on uh, the higher grade zones. Um, sure. In order to because those those are the profitable ones. Uh, right. You know, low grade zones just don't cut it uh, at a time like this. But you have to do it in, in such a way as not to sterilize your operation, and that's the challenge. Uh, so, um, you know, you try to avoid a situation where you're just cherry picking, and you try to achieve better grades through um, operational efficiencies, you know, better grade control, trying to get the guys to focus more on, on uh, you know, the mineralization right at the face, so better training of the geologists and the, and the engineers and the miners, that sort of thing. So that's, that's been crucial for us. Um, but we've also been very fortunate, too, at our, uh, our new San Ignacio mine because uh, it just so happened that, uh, you know, we got into a zone that is just naturally higher grade. Uh, so the timing was, was perfect on that, and it has allowed us to, uh, to increase grades. And um, uh, the gold grade uh, relative to silver is actually higher at San Ignacio as well. Uh, so that's pretty it's, cool, uh, huh? In byproduct, and that's worked, that's worked well for us. Yeah. You know, and you know what's amazing is that, you know, the, the aspect, uh, and by the way, folks, okay, we do own, I do own Great Panther, the Gold Report owns it, we, we have for a while, uh, just as a disclosure. Um, you know what's amazing, man, is that, you know, gold went topside. Silver, man, that thing just kept hanging, you know, at the $16 level. I mean, I like how it's pushing today, but man, that $16 level has been a tough level for silver. Yeah, it seems to be a, a bit of a psychological barrier there, and I think when we do break through, uh, uh, it's really going to take off uh, to the upside. You know, the silver-gold ratio is, uh, has gotten up to over 80, which I mean, yes. we haven't seen that in a very, very long time. And, um, you know, it would more normally be in the, in the 50s, uh, you know, maybe around 50 to 1, something Sure. Like so, uh, so once it does start to, uh, to correct, um, then silver really should outperform gold uh, quite significantly. No, I, I can see that. You know, I've been saying to the audience for quite some time now, it seems like every time it gets up there, it's like, you know, the, there's a little resistance at 17, but it almost looks like, you know what, this, we've been trying to get through the 16 for so long that it just kind of like wants to blow by that and, you know, go right up to the 18 area. What is really cool is that, you know, your stock, a lot of other, a few other silver stocks, they have, they're almost leading the metal up. You know, which I've seen before. I mean, I you know that happened yeah. in 2002, 2003. The, the the equities really led you know the, the the metal up. So it's kind of interesting to see that. How the heck did the equities 
know that when none of us know that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right, though, Tom. I mean, uh, you know, the mining equities, uh, the producers in particular, uh, you know, usually start at the top and works uh, works down towards, uh, you know, the junior producers and the explorers. But, yes. Um, uh, it's, it's often, you know, the juniors and the mid-sized companies that, uh, that have the, the biggest uh, moves on a percentage basis. And, uh, you know, our stocks uh, tripled uh, since last summer. And more than, um, yeah, it's effectively tripled. So, it's, uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a great move. Yeah, no doubt. So as as we as we go forward, I mean, it, it's really cool, no doubt, that you you know between the cash situation, meaning Nordet doing business in Mexico, which is a great jurisdiction. Um, your your growth potential is the growth potential in Peru also, Bob, uh, in Mexico and Peru. Um, well, right now it's more in Peru. Okay. Um, and in Mexico, we're um, we're just holding production steady uh, this year. Yes. We uh, we had a thirty percent increase uh, year over year uh, in two thousand fifteen. So that was quite a jump as we brought uh, the new San Ignacio mine on and ramped up production there. Um, but uh, you know, for this year, we're going to focus on just operational efficiencies, and making sure that we can keep our costs down and uh, maximize cash flow as much as possible. Uh, and then the you know the, the majority of the growth uh, hopefully will will come from Peru. We're still evaluating the the core cancer mine uh, project, and um, uh, you know we do have an option on the project. We aren't outright yet, so we just have an option to purchase it, uh, assuming that uh, everything goes well. So um, we're just uh, plugging away, and uh, we'll see where it takes us. But yeah, those... I love the country. There's there's great opportunity in Peru. And those options are great ways to basically get your head wrapped around the mind to decide whether you want to take the, the production risk, right? Well, that's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, you know, rather than stepping up to the plate and having to shell out, um, you know, a big chunk of change to, to buy it right, and then potentially finding out after the fact that it wasn't what you thought it was, you know, an option agreement has uh, allowed us to to go in and, uh, you know, by virtue of just paying um, a million and a half uh, kind of entry fee, if you will, um, yes. you know, we've been able to do uh, almost a year's worth of work now, and uh, we've got a much better sense of uh, what the project entails, um, you know, where the challenges lie, opportunities lie. So it's a, it's a great way to, um, uh, to assess the project. Yeah. And you know, it's just amazing. It, it, everything is so counterintuitive that, you know, when and I'm talking the broader market and the, the dollar that, you know, uh, the, the Fed was supposed to go up on rates. The whole world's going down on rates. Now the Fed can't go up on rates. And everyone thought that the dollar's going to go to the moon and the bottom line of the dollar as other fiat currencies are all going down. So it's, it's, it's just absolutely wild, man, you know, how things can change. And, 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 it's, and it's been years. They've been like this for years, but I think it's a perception also. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's, there's so much volatility uh, pretty much across the board, no matter where you turn, and, uh, and that's why I think a lot of people are turning uh, back to gold uh, as a safe haven, uh, because uh, you know, nobody can predict what's uh, what's going on anywhere anymore. It seems. No, well, they can, they they absolutely can predict if they have their money in the bank, they don't get any interest. So that that doesn't fly anymore. About the holding gold doesn't pay interest. Well, guess what? You know, it goes up. Bob, I thank you so much. I know you got a bunch of meetings in Mexico. We appreciate you coming on, and we look forward to you coming on again. Thanks a lot, Tom. It's been great talking to you again. You too, man. Have a great one. Have a safe one. You stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. Dow's up ten. Nasdaq's down seven. S&P's are off six.